Hello, welcome back. Before we move on to the remaining performer financial statements, let's take a look at the assumption area first. Here are the assumptions for Tasty Taco for the balance sheet. Um, so here we're assuming that for current assets, including petty cash, short-term investment, ST stands for short-term, accounts receivable, and current uh, other current assets, you will not grow, you'll grow at 0% per year. Inventory is gonna is assumed to be two weeks worth of annual cost of goods sold. Supplies, inventory, prepaid insurance, these are gonna increase by 2% per year. Fixed assets is not gonna increase. And wages payable, which is a liability, is assumed to be one week of total wages and salary. So these are the assumptions. And we're gonna use this to help us create the balance sheet. So again, similar to what we've done before, we're going to pull out the non-cash current asset and current liabilities. We just um, to focus on them. The year zero balance, this was from the startup page assumption. So this is what they have when they start the business. Um, remember that this is assumed to grow at um, 0%. So petty cash is equal to 1 plus. The assumption here is zero percent infantry again looking at here infantry assumed to be two weeks of annual cost of goods sold another important thing to recognize is that this is the item at the end of the year so this is december 31st year one what we want to make sure in terms of inventory is that we have sufficient inventory to last us for the first two weeks of year two, right? So the two weeks cost of goods sold is based on cost of goods sold in year two. So imagine this, this is inventory in year zero at the end. So when you open the door for the first time for the business, you should have two weeks worth of inventory on hand. So this inventory is based on cost of goods sold starting in year one. And the inventory at the end of year one is based on cost of goods sold at the beginning uh, at year two. So this is ending inventory in year one, and that should be based on year two's cost of goods sold. And we'll multiply that, uh, we'll divide that by 52 because there are 52 years, 52 weeks per year. And then we'll divide, we'll multiply that by the number of weeks in the assumption area. We'll make that an absolute reference. So this is our cost of goods sold. Inventory and prepaid insurance, again, we let's go back in here. Inventory, prepaid insurance is going to increase by um, 2% per year. So supplies inventory is going to increase by 2%. And so will prepaid insurance. So we can copy that. Now, if the format doesn't uh, is not correct, you can always change that. You should always make sure that your statement is formatted correctly. This is a new business, this is a restaurant, so we don't have a whole lot of current liability other than um, wages. And in the assumption area, we were told that we assume um, we'll have one week of wages and, and salary um, as our accounts payable. Unlike inventory, which you need to have on hand, so you're looking forward to the next year's cost of goods sold. Wages payable, this is um, wages, this is um, money that you owe your employee. So your employee already work, but you haven't paid them yet. So this is the last week of wages that they have worked, but you haven't cut them the check. So this is based on the same year's wages. So we have total wages and salary. We divide that by 52, again, that's uh, per week, and multiply that by the assumption. The base case assumption is one week. So here's our wages payable. So now we have both current asset and current liability. We can copy that to the next two years. So we have forecasted our um, future current asset and current liability. Next step is to compute the year-to-year -year change. 
So let's take a look at the order. So the first one is wages payable again. Um, is equal to the new minus the old. I have um, decided to put um, current liability first instead of um, current um, assets. We do not include cash in our um, cash statement of cash flow analysis. So we start with inventory. And next will be supplies and prepaid insurance. So that is similar. And now we just have to copy this for the next two years. Notice that um, increasing current liability of wages payable is very big in year one. And that is because even though you have you uh, when you first open the door for business, you don't owe any outstanding wages. But by the end of year one, um, you would have outstanding wage. Uh, so you get a break there at the end of year one. Uh, but going forward, um, the change is going to be much smaller. Next, we're going to uh, we're going to complete the first part um, of the cash flow um, statements. We're going to complete the cash flow from operating activities. Uh, and most of this information we already have. So this is very similar to what we've done in the last um, business. So net income, we have computed that from the income statement. Depreciation, again, that comes from the income statement. And at increase in current liability, we notice that liability, uh, current liability increases every year. So that is an inflow. And increase in current asset is an outflow. So again, we can you can either put that in as a negative number, then you can sum up all the differences, or you can put it in as a positive number, and then you will um, have to subtract them. So again, use what works um, for you or the particular business you are in. So this is uh, when you form this formula, it's important to make sure that you are adding all the inflows and you're subtracting all the outflows. So we have net income and depreciation and increase in liability. All those are inflows and increase in current assets. These are outflows. So now we have um, net, in net cash flow from operating activities. So we can do that for all three years. For the next category, for the next set of assumptions for investing activity and financing activity, uh, we really simplify that. This is a new business. We're going to assume that they are not going to buy or sell any fixed assets, um, but we still want to continue, uh, complete the model. So this is equal to plus sales minus purchases. And for um, Financing activity, again, we want to add new borrowing minus repayment plus new equity issue, less dividend. So, and we're assuming that um, all of those will be um, zero in the beginning. And finally, we can compute net change in cash. And that is simply cash flow from operating activities minus cash flow from investing activity plus cash flow from financing activity. Next, we can figure out the um, cash balance. Uh, the beginning cash balance is from the startup. Again, um, we assume that's how much money we start with. And that change in cash is what we just computed. The ending cash balance is beginning plus the net change in cash. And in year two, the beginning balance is the ending balance from the last year. And the rest, is, the rest of the formula is the same. So now we can copy this across. We are done with the statement of cash flow. Next will be the balance sheets. So for cash, we have um, computed the beginning balance. So the ending, ba uh, the ending balance in year zero is the beginning balance. Um, actually, that was from the assumption area as well. Uh, petty cash, that was, uh, we included that earlier here. So we brought in all the information here so we can just um, use them. 
Uh, the same is true for infantry. Again, if you compare the order, it's infantry, supplies, and prepaid insurance. And in here, we have infantry, supplies, and prepaid insurance. So we can just copy those down. Other current asset, we assume that to be the zero to begin with. And the total current asset is the sum of your cash as well as all your inventories. For long-term long asset, all this comes from the startup page. So this is information we put in for you. We included in, uh, kitchen equipment and fixture and furniture in here. Um, and the reason for that is because even though we are leasing most of our equipment, uh, we want to um, include that as an option. Also, there's a possibility that we may want to buy more in the future. So again, create your model with maximum flexibility. Of course, total asset is simply current asset plus Netflix assets. Now that we're finished with zero, year zero, we can move on to year one. For uh, ending cash balance, um, here we have ending cash balance for year one. And for petty cash, um, it's actually the same as before, right? We have, um, if you look at the assumption area, we already did this um, earlier. So we can just reference our calculation that we have done here. And for other current asset, we do have to create a new formula for that because we did not have that in the original um, calculation. And here we know that it's also growing by 0%. Okay. So that's our current asset. Um, total is the same. And for fixed asset, we assume, uh, in the assumption, we said that the, we assume it to grow at 0% also. So that makes this relatively easy. We want to include the growth rate even though it is 0% because we want to have the option that maybe we want to increase it in the future. For accumulation, just like what we did with the last company, is equal to the period balance minus current depreciation because this is a counter account, so we'll include that as a negative number. And that fixed assets is the same, it's the sum of the total. And the same is true for total asset. Now that we have computed year one, we can copy it over to years two and three. So always set up your model so that you can copy across years a lot easier. Next, let's move on to liabilities. Wages payable, when get, once again, we already computed that, so we can pick that up from earlier on. Okay, here's our wages payable for year zero through year three. Uh, we include the options for to have other current liability, but in uh, in the base case we don't have any, so that's we'll just keep that at zero again. Maintain model flexibility for bank loan. It depends on our new borrowing and our repayment. So the bank loan depends on what we have what we did in here. So this is where we enter our financing decision. Our bank loan balance is equal to our period balance, so year zero, plus any new borrowing in year one, minus any repayment in year one. So that's our new bank loan balance. And right now we only have one long-term liability, so that's just repeating. And your total liability is current liability plus long-term liability. So that's relatively straightforward. The same is true for uh, common stock. Most companies do not have par value for their common stock. We we'll assume that this will remain the same. For additional pay in capital, this is the real money that um, shareholders uh, pay when they buy into a business. And this could change. This is, so this is equal to the period balance plus any new equity that the company may have raised. So that will be new equity issue. 
and accumulated retain earnings we have computed that earlier so again we can just pick that up from the um, statement of owners equity so this is the ending accumulated retain earnings and total stockholders equity is the sum of all three accounts now that we have computed that for year one we can copy that over to year two and year three and then finally total liability and owners equity is equal to total liability plus total stockholders equity and again hopefully it is it will matches total asset so let's copy that to years one two and three and see if they match hooray you just created the performer statements for a new business next we're going to take a look at scenario analysis for a new business if you look at the assumption area we have a lot of assumptions so it becomes uh you want to be more selective in terms of what uh, variables in the assumption area you want to include in your scenario analysis to make things easier to locate and uh, find i have put all the scenarios in a separate page so on this tab as one this is the first strategy for this business and here are the scenarios under the first strategy so you notice that there is a best case base case and worst case again i make sure that everything is or is the same order that makes copying it a lot easier so let's go back to the assumption page and let's decide which variable we want to include in our scenario. To decide which variable to include, think about what is important. So which variables are important to the business owner and also uh, which and to the business and also which variables are within your control and which variables are beyond your control. So some are relatively obvious, the uh, revenue and growth rate, you definitely want to include those. Um, the number of hours the employees can work, that is some, you, you have some control over that and that may also vary. The amount that you have to pay per hour, that is less likely to change that um, the, in the near term, in the next year or two. Um, the $60,000 that say the owner, he decide how much that is. So again, that is unlikely um, to change. On the other hand, um, benefit is a big unknown so you may want to include that in your in your analysis um your other sgna so again uh, these are potential things that you can change so advertising um utility insurance supplies um accounting um so these are these are uh, things that are typically with, with uh, outside your control licensing is dictated by the government rent is once you sign the lease is unlikely to going to change the same thing for the lease once you sign the lease that is unlikely going to change um, other things that may be important is um, future increases so the three percent may be important uh, again this is an assumption affecting the future so those may be things that you want to include so let's go ahead and create our scenario we go to data what if analysis and scenario manager and we want to add a scenario we're going to call that our base case so here for changing cell we want to pick up the cell that we just talked about that we say we want uh, we definitely want to change so we want to include base case always include the label because otherwise it can be confusing what you are working with um, we said this four are definitely things that we want to incre include we want to include the number of hours we also want to include employee benefits um, and all the way to um, accounting and technology. In addition to that, we also want to include potential future increases. So those are the two things that we think, uh, these are the items that we, uh, variables we want to analyze. Of course, I'm demonstrating this as an example. 
when you're doing your own analysis, you will need to choose which variable you want to include. I just show you how you don't have to include everything, but you can selectively include certain, certain items. Even though some of the scenarios will have the same number, so the ones that I don't change. So for example, they are, um, I'm only changing the assumption in the various scenario. Um, you do want to you you still include them that will make your um analysis that will make your copying a lot more efficient now let's go ahead and put in the best case and the worst case because i included the same structure all i have to do is just copy this entire best case value into the assumption area again if you're creating this model on your own, make sure that you match those um, uh, lines perfectly. Otherwise, you can mess up your, your model. And all I need to do is go to What If Analysis, Scenario Manager, and I'll add my best case. And notice that I'm using the same changing cell, so I don't have to ch make any changes. And we'll do the same thing for the worst case. So go to Scenario Manager, and now we add the worst case. And just like what we've done before, you can switch between each case by pressing Show, and your model will change. Similar to what we've done in the Peace Blossom case, we also created a summary area. Uh, let's scroll down to that. So in here, I created this area, and I want uh, to make sure that you get in the habit of including the label of the scenario you're working with. So the first thing we want to include is which case we are working with. So we want to pick that up by using a formula reference. And then here, um, this comes from the model. So this is year one total revenue. So equal to year one total revenue. And next, we're going to pick up year one net income. Uh, ending retained earnings. So it's up to you to decide which of this information is important. Um, net cash flow, that's typically a useful one. And then ending cash balance, that's also typically important. Okay. So once you have selected for year one, you can easily copy it over for year two and year three. So we have created our uh, scenario summary. And now if you go to what if analysis, and scenario manager, and you change the scenario, you can see the different scenarios. Next, we're gonna, um, we can also do something else which is to create a scenario summary. So here we can create a summary. And here you can choose uh, what you want to display. So let's say we want to display all of this. Excel will automatically generate a new page in here. Now, if you have named your cells, then instead of putting the cell reference here, it will put the name of the cell. But if you did not, then um, it is a good idea for you to type in what each of these represents. So re you can go back and look at G79 and see what that is. Um, it, but we did remember that this is total revenue for year one. And this is total revenue for year two. 
and for year three. And this is net income for year one and this is net income for year two and so forth. You get the idea. So make sure you label this appropriately. So this is the minimum. You want to make sure that you label everything. Uh, you may want to take the time to make this look prettier. Here is a more formatted um, case um, presentation with more titles and more clearly labeled. Uh, this is very important and, and everything is formatted in a much easier to read uh, format. As you can see, the worst case is really, really bad. So we're going to go back to the drawing board and take a look at an alternate strategy for Tetsitako. And we'll pick that up in the next video.